And also, I, I ran across some information, uh, some weapon producers, financial banking corporations, communication companies who provide financial backing to Nancy Pelosi for her campaign. Uh, could you list those uh, corporations? Well, she does get a lot of um, money from, from, like you said, people who profit off of war and people like... Um, you know, big pharmaceutical companies, mortgage bankers, uh, the people that she's helping, um, you know, right now with this bailout bill. And the specific companies, I don't have it in front of me, um, but there has been, uh, she has gotten, gotten money or received money from, like, Lockheed Martin, which is a major defense contractor here in America. She's received money from a company called Amgen, who makes... Um, Pharmaceuticals, and she has sponsored and helped legislation to uh, to make increase their uh, bottom line. She owns, not only does she get campaign contributions from from these corporations, but she owns stock in them. For example, AIG was just given an 85 billion dollar bailout from uh, our government, and she, her, and her husband owe own a half a million dollars of stock in that company. That's what I mean by um, conflicts of interest. Yeah, we were talking to our former, our, our guest, first guest before you came on, and his name is uh, Wayne Madsen, and actually he was talking about how AIG was uh, a cover company for uh, CIA operations. So it's just amazing that uh, Nancy Pelosi ties right into that. Uh, blows my mind. Uh, also, what happens is, is a few years ago you passed a Medicare bill down in the United States, and it was only supposed to cost a couple hundred million dollars. And to my knowledge, it, it basically has increased about 800, 900 million. What does that say about the system? Uh, our system in the United States is it's broken. You know, the only the only way we can fix it is, like I said, to have um, the voice of the people in it. Um, the Democrats they talk about affordable health insurance. They don't talk about uh, single-payer health care um, along the same lines as, as the system that you all have um, in Canada. And they don't because their pockets are lined by the HMOs, the PPOs, other insurance companies, big pharma. And we can't, our senior citizens can't negotiate to lower their um, costs. Medication costs here in America can be horrendous for somebody who's sick or for a senior citizen. And so, um, you know, that's why I say we have to get lobby money and get the lobbyists out of Washington, D.C., because it's uh, almost now um, Mussolini said that fascism should rightly be called corporatism because it's when... Uh, corporations and and governments collaborate, and that's what we have in America. We have this corporate fascism, and when you think of fascism, many people think of oh, people, you know, troops lot stepping down um, our streets and um, you know tanks rolling down our streets. But we don't need that in America. We have our government collaborating with the corporations. And the corporations are our corporate media that doesn't tell us the truth. You know, it hasn't told us the truth about Iraq or Afghanistan. It's not telling us the truth about this Wall Street bailout. It participates in the propaganda of the government. So that's what we have in America. We have this 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 soft fascist corporatism. We have the, uh, just the exact same danger up here in Canada because I, I spent almost five years in the United States, my wife and I, and up here, come returning to Canada in September of 2006, I'm starting to see an awful lot of the power base in the United States starting to head up here and starting to back people like Harper and also even the far left. 
as you're seeing it. The next question I have for you, um, I know it's going to be kind of hard because you lost your son over in Iraq, and uh, being someone who's served for almost nine years in the Canadian Forces, I believe that the veterans should be protected. And uh, there's been reports coming out that talk about 300,000 U.S. veterans from Iraq with PTSD and head injuries, while at the same time you've had record amounts of uh, numbers of U.S. veterans committing suicide, subpar um, uh, medical care, as seen by the horrendous conditions of the Walter Reed uh, Hospital last year, and the list goes on and on. How can we improve the situation so people that, that join a military to protect a nation you know, are, are basically protected themselves afterwards. Well, exactly. You know, that's the um, very hypocritical problem here we have in the United States. We use our, um, you know, the, it's been a long time since we've used our military to actually defend the United States of America. We've been using them for decades for this spreading this corporate colonialism around the world. Um, South America, I think, I believe South America's rising populist governments are in direct um, response to this. And, of course, you know, Chavez talking about partnering, uh, South America partnering with Russia to rein in the United States of America. But anyway, we send our children to die. First of all, we lie to them to get them to enlist. I talked um, uh, uh, at length with your party, the Bloc Quebecois Party, who opposed the war. They opposed... Um, Canada's, uh, you know, intervention in Canada didn't, of course, send troops to Iraq. But I said, well, you know, sending troops to Afghanistan just frees up troops to be in Iraq. But they didn't want to support, they didn't want to support uh, our military resistors in Canada because they said that there was, there's no draft. If there was a draft, it would be different. And I explained to them about the poverty draft. I explained to them about the lies that our recruiters use, especially, you know, and I have uh, evidence. My son was lied to five times in his recruitment contract by his recruiter. And I said, besides, why should our children who join the military, they join it to, to believe that they're protecting the United States of America. They join it believing that they're helping their community, but then they get used in these illegal and immoral wars of aggression for profit. And I said, why should they have to choose between going to prison or going and being killed or perhaps getting killed themselves? I, I mean, killing innocent people. And then we have a situation when they come home and are veterans that the Congress is voting to cut their benefits. And they can't get the help they need. And um, there was a recent statistic that... Um, I believe it, I, I can't, I'm not going to quote it because I don't remember the, the statistic, but so many of our veterans every day, including eight Iraq veterans a day, commit suicide here in America. Um, in Vietnam, 58,000 Americans were killed. Over 120,000 have committed suicide since Vietnam. I, my office is in a, a poorer section of San Francisco. I have homeless veterans walking in my office every day. To me, that this is um, very immoral. It's a crime to misuse our our nation's uh, very honorable people who who might join for various reasons, but they mostly join because they think that they're helping their country, and then they don't get the benefits that they need or they don't get the help they need. But my plan for single payer health care, and that would cover everything from mental health emotional health, physical health for everybody in America, a free education, a free university education that would cover everybody in America, not just the veterans, and for affordable housing and not, um, you know, this elitist um, country we have where, to me, it is abominable that we even have homeless people in America let alone have homeless vets. So my plan would cover everybody. And in my plan, we would cut our military spending by at least half and our armed forces by at least half and end our occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan, close many of our bases around the world, and then use that money to help people here in America and to use our military 
just for defensive purposes, not for imperialism.